Hi, I'm Jay Richards. We are here at the COSM 2022 conference and actually just about to finish it up uh, with a discussion with my friend John Tamney, uh, who has a new book called The Money Confusion. And the, the subject of the panel is about the future of money. Does it have something to do with the renewed dollar? Is it blockchain technology like Bitcoin or is it something else? John, good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, so, so first of all, tell me, how, how do you answer this question about the future of money? Uh, the future of money is that it's going to get better and better, mm -hmm. and the reason it's going to is that a capitalist system requires it so that we can move goods and services among right. people. It can't be stressed enough that money flows just signal products moving among yes. producers. And in the same way, when we lend, we don't lend money. We lend access to resources. So mm -hmm. if we've got resources, we lend the money to those who want those resources. Based on that, money that's not trustworthy, money that bounces yeah. around in value necessarily is a, basically a spoke. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a stick in, in, the, in, in a, the spoke of a tire or something yes. that sort of slows down the system because we can't trade as much if we don't, if we don't trust the measure that's, that's a facility. And that's what it is. It, 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 that's its function. It's a measure and you want a, a standard unit to be able to actually do this well. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's the dilemma. And so, so what does that look like though? And we're dealing, of course, in a world of fiat currency, dealing in a world now of blockchain technologies, are you, are you imagining some kind of hybrid or what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's interesting to think about. There, there's this popular view that there's no market in money. Oh, right. the government's just, it, that governments issue it and there's no market for it. But in fact, there's a very real market for money. Mm -hmm. And how we know this is that the dollar referees just about any transaction yes. anywhere in the world. If you went and arrived in Pyongyang or Tehran or Caracas today and you wanted to actually buy goods and services, you better have dollars in your pocket. Yeah. And the dollars aren't in these countries because the Fed put them there. Sure. Money is a reflection of where there are goods and services to move. Money, mm -hmm. money is a mirror image of goods and services. So there's a market for money right now. The dollar is the world's currency. Yep. But the dollar has demerits, as George and I have written for years. Many right. others. It's, it's, it's not a perfectly stable measure. And so my conclusion in the book is that a capitalist system that can put a supercomputer in our yes. pockets can easily, easily issue stable monetary units that don't change in value over time. Okay, so what does that look like, though? Uh, how it looks like, what I speculate is that gradually yeah. we're going to be in a situation where in Pyongyang, you mm -hmm. can say, well, you take dollars, and they say yes. My guess is we're gradually going to get to the point where we'll walk into stores and say, do you take Amazon dollars? Okay. Do you take JP Morgan dollars? Do you right. take Target dollars? And people will say yes, and as they do, these more credible units will start circulating. Hmm. And why will they circulate? Because people don't want to get ripped off. When right. they hand real goods and services over, they want to get they want to get money that's exchangeable for equal value. Amazon can't devalue on us the way that the U.S. Hmm. Treasury has, and the way that yeah. governments historically have. And so my guess is that it's going to be a very simple transition. The young will lead us. Mm -hmm. My 80-year-old parents won't be the first. <laughs> right. Uh, young people will gradually start circulating money that's more trustworthy. Okay. Well, and because I mean, money works if the relevant people trust it, and it doesn't work if they don't. So mm -hmm. this is the basic idea. So do you, what what role do you think the blockchain technologies and blockchain you know currencies like Bitcoin or some future version of that are going to play in this? My guess, what I argue in the book, is mm -hmm. that Bitcoin is the Netscape of the blockchain. Yes, that's of the, plausible. Of the movement. Mm -hmm. It was essential, instrumental. Right. Bitcoin introduced to people the idea that you could have a private form of money. Mm -hmm. But its instability speaks yeah. to why it's not money. Historically, money has emerged throughout centuries, throughout millennia. What's most stable generally pushes out what isn't. Mm -hmm. and so Bitcoin, by its very design, can't be a stable measure. And so I don't think it's so much going to be that. I think what we're going to see is that gradually what is a first grade problem that's been turned into an AP calculus problem <laughs> will be brought back to first grade. Money is basic. Mm -hmm. And because it's basic, I think a lot of the blockchain crowd has wholly overthought this. Okay. And it's going to go back to first principles. Uh, a foot ruler or a stopwatch is yes. some advanced bit of technology. They're valuable because they're they're exact. They're stable. And gradually, yeah. I think you're going to see the same thing with money. And that's not going to require all this 
arcane thinking. Well, and of course, the, 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 the genius of, the, of blockchain, at least with respect to Bitcoin, is that it's limited. So unlike a fiat currency in which a government can just sort of inflate forever, I guess, there's a limitation. But as you said, it's also a very complex instrument that's more volatile than the commodities market. But I would also say that you don't want something limited. We don't yeah. worry about the number of foot rulers or right. the number of stopwatches or watches. What we worry about is that they're accurate. Okay. And money in the same, you wouldn't ever want to limit a measure. Right. And so that to me, the scarcity of Bitcoin, that it's limited to 21 million is its biggest demerit. Hmm. If it's good, if it's stable, the only limiting aspect to money growth is production. Where right. there's production, there's money. Where yeah. there isn't production, there's no money. No central bank can get around this truth. And so I think the mistake of Bitcoin is the mistake hmm. so many people make with money is they assume that it has to be scarce. No, money just has to be stable. And, it, and that's another Aren't argument. those connected, though? I mean, they're not. They're, I, they're I mean, not. if we were the to... The argument I make in the book okay. is that, in fact, all this money printing that people associate mm -hmm. with inflation, that's what happens after the inflation. You depart a monetary standard, you de depart hmm. an agreement about value for a currency only to print it because it ceases to circulate. And so you print it more and more hoping that it'll start circulating mm -hmm. only for it to disappear. So it ends up not doing anything. Good money yeah. is endlessly circulated. Switzerland's a very small country, mm -hmm. yet the Swiss franc is one of the most circulated currencies in the world. Inflation? No, it's just trusted. So what's trusted would logically grow in amount. Okay. And it would grow in amount because people want to use it. If the dollar had a stable de de definition, mm -hmm. it would be circulating even more widely around the world. Well, and so you need a stable definition then, as you said. So is this, should it be, what is it calibrated to then, if, to, to anchor it? My, or my should honest be. guess is, is that, again, we've made an AP calculus problem out right. of its first grade. Gold didn't just become money one day. Mm -hmm. Gold became a definer of money, not a limiter of money supply. Gold became a way to define money because it's so stable. Right. And so gradually, over thousands of years, it became money around the world. It wasn't decreed. It mm -hmm. was what the markets happened upon. And so my guess is, and I'm not married to gold. Right. My, my guess is whatever emerges in private money as the most popular, the most circulated, right. is going to be something that either perhaps has a gold definition. Yep. or whereby they find they happen on another commodity or something that doesn't bounce around in value. Right. Bitcoin, by definition, Oh, it's all over fluctuates. the place. Yeah. Gold's genius is that it doesn't fluctuate. Yeah. What fluctuates is the currencies that are priced or measured in terms of gold. Okay. So that's a very important distinction. It once, is. Once you, once you agree that you're going to define a currency in terms of what's stable, you don't have to worry then about its supply. Markets yeah. will take care of it. Markets will take care of the supply of money mm -hmm. in much the same way they take care of how many refrigerators to right. make and how many uh, you know Xboxes to make. Uh, money is just a reflection of, of production in the economy. Well, and as George points out, the, the, though you're exactly right. I mean, t tying money to gold is a social convention. The nice thing about it is that historically, um, it, it, the increase of its supply, with a few exceptions, has been more or less steady. So mm -hmm. there's a kind of natural limiting factor to that. There is, but even if there is a huge surge in supply, it's got to be it's got to be remembered that all the gold on this earth is still there. Yeah. All the right. gold ever mined, and so yeah, the way I describe it in the book is that yeah, if I sold a million shares of Exxon Mobil, mm -hmm. oh wow, you're going to move the price. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to move the price because there's billions of shares outstanding. Yes. It would be a drop in the bucket. Right. With gold, multiply that so stock flow disparity mm -hmm. by many, 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 many times. And so any discoveries, even if they're large, any sales even if large, yeah. can't move the stability. Yes. And again, this wasn't, it wasn't decreed. This was just market actors looking, as they always do in any society, mm -hmm. for the currency that is most stable. And what you find in the real world is that governments don't need to create this. In any society where there's production, in any society, including POW camps, where there are goods and services to be <laughs> right. moved, money always emerges. And in Germany, yeah. after World War II, it was cigarettes. Yes. They were more stable than the Renton mark that was no longer, no longer an official currency. Mm -hmm. And so a pack of cigarettes got you a night with a woman. It got you cameras. It got yep. you the goods and services because it was viewed as, as exchangeable for other things. And so the focus too often is on how we're going to get it. As long as there's production, there will always be money right. to move it. 
My guess, however, is that a capitalist system no longer can exceed what governments have issued. Okay, so th this is fascinating because, of course, you know, the, the switch to cigarettes was emergent. Nobody declared that, and of so this is this did. is the key point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happens, and yeah. it, it's always happened throughout history that you find what's most trusted. And with obvious reasons, no one's going to bring to market something for paper or calorie mm -hmm. shells or cigarettes that don't similarly exchange for goods and services right. elsewhere. And so it's this natural market phenomenon that sadly too many people on our side, too many libertarians have yeah. reduced to money supply and money growth and all this. That is the equivalent of, plan of the Soviet Union's five-year plans. Hmm. Where there's production, there will always be money. Don't worry. And it's, that's the, the book's main ultimate thesis. Okay. A, don't worry about money. It yeah. takes care of itself. And because it takes care of itself, because it's a market phenomenon, isn't it logical that a capitalist system that can build buildings that, go, that are eventually going to go miles into the sky can also create a monetary unit that can be trusted? Mm -hmm. and I, I think it's obvious they will. And they will because they have to, because we are, our potential is only limited mm -hmm. by our ability to divide up work. And so money that holds its value has enormously grand economic implications. Mm. John Tammany, thanks. thanks for joining me. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. The book's The Money Confusion. The money confusion and you, several copies. Yes, absolutely. Watching. Looking yes. forward to hearing you and George talk about it on yes. stage. <laughs> I'm Jay Richards, and we are here at the COSM 2022 conference. Thanks for joining us.